Thank you so much to our very passionate speaker. Uh, good luck with the programs that you have. And I think this is a challenge uh, to us. It's a call for action. And I think also especially for the men and boys. I feel you. It's all about women here and girls. But what stops you from creating a men's federation for world peace, right? Huh? Herman? Ah, but of course we have here the representative of Universal Peace Federation, uh, Mr. Hyder. So please approach him and say, I want to be a peace advocate with your organization. On this note, I would like to thank the speakers that we have here, but I would like to open the floor for any questions that you might have, any comments, any suggestions, any input, any takeaway from the simple um, gathering, meeting that we've had today on the occasion of the 79th year of the United Nations founding anniversary. So do we have any takers? Do we have any brave, young, not so young people in the house with questions? Or was it also, yeah, it's self-explanatory, I understand. But maybe you have ideas you have that you can share with us. We tested the microphone, so I assure you they are working, okay? It's a pity not to use the technology in front of us. Any, any, anyone? Yes, please. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you so much for your presentations. They're very, very interesting. And I have a question for Mr. Herman. <laughs> um, how, what are the tools or the strategies that you have implemented for incorporating young people to decision-making from your, uh -huh. Thank you. So we say the best thing to avoid problems is all over the world is education. And we have in worldwide a good, very good cooperation with all the authorities to prevent crimes and problems. But the main problem is, and I said it in my, my speech, is uh, poverty and poverty creates criminality yeah, quite often. And this is the poverty, uh, hunger, all these negative perspectives are the base for misunderstanding and for aggressivity. So what only we can do from our, with all the organizations of the United Nations or the uh, nonprofit organizations is to create a deep understanding at the base. Yeah, to uh, only money cannot heal everything. Yeah, and so the people also, but we want to bring the people also to other side that they cooperate with us. And sometimes, of course, there are misunderstandings from religious side, from uh, other ethic problems or whatever it is. But the most important thing I would say is to give the people a perspective. Um, thank you, but uh, I wanted to know, like, what is the instrument, the tool that you're using for bringing them together to talk about this, to, to educate them on these perspectives that you're talking about? Oh, to give them to, to give the people a perspective is quite difficult because if they have in their country poverty, no jobs, yeah, no employments, um, they have um, um, they are frustrated. So th th this is a, um, uh, an, an an endless an endless problem. Yeah, where to, where to start? Where where to create? They, they they have no economical base. Yeah, so the the the, the it would be the best solution would be to bring, it's a very theoretical answer, to bring companies to the countries that they can employ um, people. And this is, would also be one reason to avoid refugees, yeah, so that they, can, they, they would have a perspective in their own country, yeah, and they are not obliged to leave their countries. Because who is living in the country? Only young people, and the young people are the future and the hope of every country. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Herman. If I may add something, something very simple, something very practical. I myself am a member of UNCAV. And so what we, and I would say it's something, you know, when you engage the youth, um, back home we have a saying in an idle mind, it's a devil's workshop. So um, if we organize even simple things uh, that focuses their minds on positive things other than, for example, engaging in drugs or fighting and whatever. And it's something that organizations such as UNCAV in their own way can do by collaborating with other organizations. For example, we organize uh, painting exhibitions for children, for young people. Express what you mean, what you understand about peace or express the horror you see if you live in a country that's you know beset by, by poverty, by war, by calamity. Put it out there. And we do this not as a standalone organization, but in collaboration with others. For example, in recent years, we've organized uh, exhibitions on agenda humanity, peace building, things like that. Something so simple, something kind of so tangible that allows for a space for conversation and a space for positive things that, that, that especially the young people can do. Nothing so big, nothing where we need a lot of funding, which in most cases, NGOs and organizations on the ground do not really have. So nothing very highfalutin, but like we, I think the message that I keep hearing is it starts from within. Uh, so if in our own little way, in our own little community, even in our homes, in our family, we, we go for what can we do in terms of maintaining peace, upholding peace, and ushering in peace in family, society, community. But thank you so much for your question, and Herman, for the answer that you have provided. Anything else? Yes, please. Would you like to say your name and your affiliation or your country? Thank you. My name is uh, Khaled, uh, director of uh, We Are Now Base Hasco organization. Uh, you all talk about the crucial uh, role of youth and civil society in uh, your country. But uh, youth and civil society play a crucial role in a free and democratic society. You may know in our world, there is a, there is a country where girls have no girls have deprived from their basic right, right of education. Uh, women have no right to work. Women have no right to do, demonstrate, to express their view. Youth every day, hundreds of youth leave that country because of lo lack of uh, uh, future. So naturally, in such society, youth and civil society play zero role in that country. So I believe we all have some responsibility toward Afghan, Afghanistan people, particularly women and girls. We should not leave these people alone anymore. Thank you. Thank you so much for that wonderful input. Indeed, you are right. You have described a situation that all of us are aware of and see. Women, girls in some countries, indeed do not have the right. So as you rightly put it, the youth and civil societies in those type of lands will not really have, as you said, will have zero power, zero influence. Are there any takers from our speakers or from the audience? Because this is a good way then to come up with something, to think, to... Yes, Merle, you have something. Yes, may I respond to that? Thank you for pointing that out. That is a very uh, crucial, very important issue to raise. Um, but I just would like to share that, although it's really true what you mentioned, but there is hope. I know for a fact that uh, we work with uh, young women uh, from Afghanistan and in the in America, the US, uh, the Kroc Institute of 
they have scholarship programs for brilliant Afghan women. And, and there are many of them. So don't lose hope because their minds and their, they're being empowered. And in the next five, 10, 20, 30 years, they are gonna be the future leaders. So yes, I, I just want to share that um, there are NGOs, not necessarily in Afghanistan, in, in Women's Federation, we have a training center, but in India, but for Afghan refugees. And we have uh, donated uh, schools for uh, Afghanistan together with, with Dr. Yakubi, Sakina Yakubi. Uh, she has multiple schools in Afghanistan that we are supporting financially. So it's these are undercurrents. So please don't lose hope. There are slow, slow, but it's moving forward to, to the world uh, future that we want to be a peaceful world. Thank you. Thank you for that very positive uh, message. Yes, please. Yeah. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I am Hamid Aboragif from Iraq. I'm a journalist. So um, I would like to just agree with the, uh, her Lawyer, if that, if I pronounce the name correctly, uh, like education, like of course, is uh, like is a key to solve with a lot of problems. But uh, I believe there's like, for example, the workshops, the um, uh, like kind of uh, training for youth, especially in the Middle East, will like help and uh, for the youth to to have like more awareness about everything, like you know like the situation about the life. In Iraq, for example, like um, I believe the high percentage of population in Iraq, they are youth, I think over than 65%. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, like I think UN and the international organization should maybe play role like more in the Middle East and Iraq. Um, like for example, when I go there, because I am between here and there, I don't, I don't see like, for example, there's like a clear program in, in Iraq, like, you know, to help youth, especially now in this uh, time, whereas like, uh, if you hear about like the uh, revolution, like now, like a lot of people, they are go against the, not just the government, but they like, you know, they want like um, to have like more freedom, like to need like also about the education. Education, of course, is important, but I think we need like, more like workshops or more practice for the youth to like you know to help them you know so that's what i want thank you yeah thank you for your comment that is absolutely right but i think you only can help seriously until every help needs a good base and this base is security yeah because in all these countries that the main problem is you have a, practically a war situation, yeah? And how can you do a good job if children, if young people, if women, yeah? They do not have the feeling of security, yeah? You cannot realize your ideas. You cannot realize your programs. There is, I would say there is enough money and there exist already programs to help, to support the people there. But how would you do it? How would you bring it into reality? This is the main problem. It's the same problem, not only in Iraq, it's, all the, it's, it's the same in Syria, it's the same in Afghanistan. And, um, help needs, and I repeat my words, help needs as a good base, first of all, a high level of security. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I agree with that. But I think there's like some people like me and other people there are, they could be also volunteer, like, you know, to help with that. Because I mean, if I can say like uh, people, they trust us as a journalist is like, you know, in, in our countries, we can sometimes like also help with that. But the problem there is like also, as I say, like, there's like no clear program for you and at least what I what I see or what I see in Iraq, for example. Because the people there in all these countries, they have a main problem. Main problem is that they, they daily survive. Yeah. And they say to themselves, how can I get immediately? It doesn't mean what, from which side. How can I get help, support, money, what is, whatever it is to solve 
a problem to survive until tomorrow, that I'm able to buy something. I have no money. How should I survive with my family? These are the daily problems. Yeah. And yeah, we we all know about the the problematic situation, how it is. But in this way, I think one thing is very important is a good and positive communication. And people have to trust each other. Yes, please. Um, hi, thanks a lot for, for your remark. I just wanted to add a general comment. Um, I think precisely in some scenarios, as you're saying, you don't see in a specific UN program or in a, in a specific UN direction, in this case in Iraq, correct? Um, in many cases, also the programs that the UN managed to have in a country needs to have certain connection with the government. Uh, I'll give another example where my unit is doing a project right now in Chile. And uh, something that we have in Chile is a resident coordinator for the UN, and there's something called a country program, uh, a country team, and they, through the resident coordinator, um, she, in this case, coordinates the work of different agencies in the country to make sure precisely that there's a clear direction. Uh, but of course, I'm talking about a context in Chile where they even have a collaboration and cooperation framework with the government. So this is precisely a kind of like hand in hand, the government, of course, allowing institutions from the UN to be present in the country. Um, and when in this case is possible, coordinating the works of organizations from FAO, which is agricultural, uh, IFAD, poverty, rural poverty, UNODC, organized crime, refugees, you name it. Um, but of course, it's this coordination with, with the country. Um, in places precise, precisely as Iraq or many of the MENA countries or uh, Middle Eastern countries, this coordination is, of course, harder because of the same situation with governments. So I think it's normally not as public as it is. In Chile, if you go to their website, they have a few, huge website with a lot of um, statistics, every single project that they're doing. Um, so just to, to raise that, I cannot, of course, answer for what are the specific UN programs because I don't know them and I you know, cannot answer as a global level. Uh, but just kind of like to to highlight those difficulties sometimes with coordinator coordinating and what the government allows precisely for the country to do in the country to be done and the UN agencies to do in the country. Um, so, you know, of course, we could give a look at that. Uh, I mean, if, if it's together and ask of like what is specifically in the country and what kind of like under the radar things are probably there happening that doesn't don't raise. Uh, too much attention, but probably are in the bottom line working. That sounds really very positive. So make sure to connect our two participants from Iraq with you and ODC. For both of you, thanks. So much. We have time for one more question because we have a very symbolic bridge of peace uh, uh, thingy. Uh, and Shirley, she brings peace through music. So she will be asking you if you want to sing along with her one very beautiful piece while we're doing this bridge of peace. And so I can take we can take one more question, but please, after this, we have some empanada and juice that you can eat outside of the conference rooms and continue conversing. Okay. So the end of the event is not the end of uh, what we have kind of started. So just one more question and, and then we move on to the next. Yes, please. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Joseph Kundaka. My major uh, themes is uh, to strengthen family and uh, character education. I would like to, uh, to uh, uh, say especially thank you to, to uh, Mrs. Caroline Hummelena to me uh, to me, it's the first time as I actually that I heard about your institute. Even though so I I live here with my family in Vienna for many years, and I have good contacts also to uh, some some uh, very very close friends. So, but uh, is there a possibility to because I think as a, I think all those initiatives need as a uh, to improve the networking. And is there also, also a possibility to to you have some some information or so where 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 where, uh, where I can get more or we can have more as about your initiative? Thank you. 
Um, <clears throat> absolutely, it is. Um, you can check out our website, and I will get in contact with you afterwards. And we were, we will be very happy if we get together and we um, work together. So we're absolutely open for um, anyone who wants to participate. Absolutely. So it's an NGO. This means that everyone who's interested um, is is so welcome. Plus, um, we love to work um, with people from different backgrounds. So um, and different ages. It's. Um, you know, if, if we think about integration, it's not only to integrate migrants, but integration means to work together. It's not it's not the job of migrants to get integrated, not only, but it's the job of the whole of society work together um, towards a better future or towards a stable future. Uh, so um, everyone is very welcome to um, work, with, work with us and to contribute with their ideas, absolutely. And I, I will get in touch with you later on. Thank you. On this very, very positive note, I would like to formally kind of end it with the ceremony of the Bridge of Peace, which Maria Rio will be introducing to us. And please make sure you approach our speakers and presenters. I don't know if they have enough calling cards with them, uh, but please get in touch with them so that you can collab. Do I have one more thing? Or is it Maria from the... So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Now we are <clears throat> coming to the last part of our afternoon meeting and inspirations. After so many speeches, I feel like um, to thank you and to say I, at the time when we started with Bridges of Peace, it was two years after the founding of the Women's Federation for World Peace in the year 1994. It started between Japanese and Korean women. For me, like born in East Slovakia, I never heard about the problem. Or I was not so interested or not so teached in my school about the situation between Japan and Korea. Uh, some of us are from South Korea, so they can tell us more. The sisterhood started to forgive the uh, governance of Japanese or the Korean culture, how to destroy Japanese, sorry for this, wanted to destroy Japanese culture, what was not acceptable. It's not acceptable for no culture to be destroyed. Two years later, we continued with the uh, solving of the problem after the World War II between America and Japan. And in this time, I was young mother. Now I am young grandmother. So ages uh, are between these experiences. And um, I, my daughter was 12, and she started to study English. So I uh, invited me to go to America to Austrian American couple to the family, to real family um, meeting. And I could participate on Bridge of Peace between Japanese and American sisters. And this is still touching to me. When men were watching this ceremony, and they said, when men also meet on the Bridge of Peace and embrace each other, maybe. Yeah. The atomic bomb, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, will be not necessary. Ages. My daughter is now 40. And still, yesterday, I participated on Committee on Peace meeting when we also, I listened to one old professor, very quiet and very um, internal person. And he said, in our days, we are also living in the time like 10 seconds between 12. Our thinking still we see in others enemy, still. 
our thinking is not trans transformed into the level to see in other person, um, brother or sister. So we still try to fight and to kill others for whatever reason. In the family, when one, when my children are like upset or crying or shouting, so they come to me and I and or I go to them because they are shouting and fighting, and I ask what happened, and I listen to both of them. To the child is crying because somebody hurt me. Yeah, who who hurts you? And then I go to the person who hurts and ask what happened to you? Why you needed to hurt others? And on this way, I can embrace both of my children and we can continue. We can say, please, sorry, forgive me. We still stay one family. You are all my children. This is the role of mother and even of fathers the same. Sometimes children are not coming to me. When they see me, they ask, oh, where is the opa? Where is the grandfather? So when I, so they, they wish to see both of us. Nobody from us is the origin of our existence. We are thankful to somebody before us. We call this person's parents, father and mother. So on this way, we need to come back to the origin of all creation. We listen to so many speeches about the nice uh, surroundment of our planet. Who created these things? In our hearts, we know that this is not us. Creator did it for us. We can enjoy with our husbands, with our friends, with everybody, the blooming of the flowers, the smell of the trees, of the flowers, of everything. This is gift, unconditional. We don't pay for the sunshine. We don't pay for the flowers. We take care of them. So this is the roots of the Bridge of Peace, to give thanks to the Creator and to ask him to help us, to meet, to say sorry if I did something bad to you, and to embrace you, and to say we want, we don't, do not want to do bad things to each other, and we not like to talk to each other and understand each other. And last step is to we turn to the public and we say, look at us, we were unknown to each other. Now we are sisters and we want to work for a world of sisterhood brotherhood and family we can say familiarity sometimes we fight matriarchat patriarch who is governing in the right situation sometimes mother need to say yes this way we go and sometimes mother is also helpless and are calling father where are you please help father is giving the direction so both of us father and mother are necessary in this world to make a peaceful and sustainable world. Not 17 points, just one point from the bottom of the heart to wish each other this understanding and this family and feeling that we are all brothers and sisters and we have all the same creator, independent of the skin color, of the face of our eyes, <laughs> and our nose, our mouth, we have a common base, all of us. On this way, I wish, this is everything what I can add. And um, um, we, because of the time, um, we can now give some, uh, some practical experience. We have two ladies. Yesterday we met, honestly saying, and we discussed the Filipino embassy and Filipino group. Thank you so much for your presence and support. And we discovered um, that Philippines were occupied by Spanish people. And one lady from Philippines has ancestors from Spain. 
and mm -hmm. another lady from also from Philippines has only Filipino origin mm -hmm. people. So maybe these two these two people can mm -hmm. represent like Spanish um um uh, what we call it this ag uh, aggressor yeah or somebody who comes like from the higher level or more some they wanted maybe just give something new but sometimes Filipino felt like they are occupied or breaking down and their first couple meeting together and saying from Spanish side sorry if we did something wrong to you and this forgiveness need to be accepted by the Filipino lady so please come Juliet is the name and Merle Blaste Sequila. And they can exchange the flowers like the symbol of uh, reconciliation and desire. Determinate. It is determination of myself in my heart. That means peace starts with me. I determine to become a center of peace and um, readiness to forgive and to understand and be careful not hurt each other. So please, the two ladies. Um, they, 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 first is the regret, or I say in my heart, I, I accept, I am the, and then I bow, respect you, and then we go a couple of steps to each other, and, and they embrace each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then turn to the public to show your faces. So Mary is accepting the same thing in the public. So first, I would like you to share what are the resentments and hidden suffering that might be infesting and victim. We didn't really experience in my generation the pain of conflict since the Spanish occupation which lasted for 333 years, I think now is the time for forgiveness and reconciliation and the healing of painful resentment of the past. Let us start a new beginning, forging friendships and good relations of partnership and collaboration involving the active participation of the youth in pursuit of a better world for all. I acknowledge that historical roots of conflict and the pain and suffering inflicted by my ancestors. On behalf of my Spanish ancestors, I sincerely ask for forgiveness. Will you forgive us? Forgive me. Of course, accepted. <laughs> Originally, I well, thank you. And Hala, Mrs. Hala Abdel Monati from Egypt. This is lots of studies. It needs lots of studies. What happened? And then you can discover many new things. New worlds are opening. Today, I represent two countries, the United States of America and the Philippines. 
on behalf of these countries, I would like to ask forgiveness and I would like to build, forge a new relationship with someone that I feel like the part of the world where there are so many conflicts and pain and for the things that we did and we did not do that harm the women, the children, the families, and on behalf of uh, our ancestors. I would like to start a new beginning together with you today. Um, if you can, if we can go past the pain and the sorrow and create a new history together, beautiful memories, so that um, we can raise a new breed of young people and peace leaders and build a beautiful world together with my new friend and sister. And I hope that you can accept me as your friend and sister. Azizati, Azai al Hudur, Akaf Amamakum Yom, Umat Sila, Umurit Masar Arabia, Loa Akid Lakum, Ala Ahamid Bina Isalem, Wata Aziz al Elakat Baina Shoub, Inana Nasa Gahidin, Lizalet Gamia al Moane, Alati, Tasabba Beha, Ba al Bad Fil Madi, Wanam al Ala Tasi, Al Akta, Wal Mazalim, Alati Ainat Minha Shoubana, Inana Kanisa. نملك القدرة على خلق علاقات جميلة قائمة على التعاون والمحبة لنسهم في بناء عالم أفضل يسوده السلام دعونا نتحد كأخوات ونعمل معا من أجل مستقبل مشرق خالي من النزاعات حيث يسود الأمل والوئام بين جميع الأمم شكرا <تصفيق> I understand what she said. We have been put to the mask, can not be our so. Thank you, Sir Alex. Thank you. Thank you. Student Bank. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, now the third one are young ladies, uh, Ms. Yonghe Hasinen from South Korea and Sara Roya Ropas. Maybe your mother, the, the mother can be instead of Sara because Sara needed to go to the school, yeah, I think. To go to the, she, to the unit, to your study. Yeah. So maybe you can represent your daughter or okay. should I? <laughs> <laughs> Um, with young Hasinen. Is she here? I oh, yeah, here. There is she. She represents Youth Federation ah. for World Peace and Unification, and they have also similar projects like mothers or grandmothers. They also have uh, education for to to have to be interested to overcome the 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 uh, um, not uh, just look away from the from the pain. So they visit uh, people outside of the society and they ask them, what happened to you? How can you come back to the to the family? So this is Yonghe Hasinen, she represents you. Mm -hmm. And Sara, uh, yes, you are now Sara. <laughs> so, she's from South Korea. symbolic bridge of peace on behalf of my daughter the young people of the philippines not just here in austria but all over the world and across europe i offer as a form of peace peace in terms of collaboration so to you my new friend i give you the flower do i have to beg for forgiveness <laughs> if i ever do anything that i need to apologize i do it now and uh, yeah Peace. Um, yeah, on behalf of all the um, Korean people, like from the past, if anything that we did wrong in order to protect our nation or really establish 
mindness that they want to do that for themselves and then hurting the Filipino or different people. Mm -hmm. I want to say sorry rep as a representative of Korea young person. <laughs> and yeah, also I want to thank you uh, to Philippines because of when we had the Korean War, actually 1950, Philippine young people, they came to Korea to support uh, as a U part of UN United Nations. So yeah, I'm really grateful for that, <laughs> the sacrifice that you made. And we want to make peace from now on for the yes. future. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, in addition, I just want to, to let you know, not just the young people in the Philippines, all over the world, they love Koreans. Oh, nice. Korean drama. <laughs> <laughs> Korean serial. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much this was they were three examples of possibilities all others you can do in your home if you have some conflict with somebody so on the end my husband invited me once to a, a psychiatric uh, meeting where a, a medical doctor said when you when he fight with his wife, he said, "Okay, we are united that we are not united. So let's make a break. <laughs> let's drink a cup of coffee and eat little cake, and let's think again what and try to come together and make common base to come together again. So very simple way how to uh, make conflict not very long time only." on daily basis. So every evening, ask husband or children, are you satisfied with me or what happened? And thank you for the day and sleep well. <laughs> thank you so much. On that very positive note, on behalf of the organizers, I would like to all our, thank all our presenters and speakers. Can we give them a big round of applause? Uh, I hope you will get in touch with them. They will connect with you. Um, let's do something together. It's a conversation that's been open. It's maybe possibilities to do something together. But at the end of the day, you know, um, the road to tr uh, the the road to peace is not a road for one person or one society. It's a road that we all have to travel together. So on that very very positive note, Shirley will sing a song for us. Not yet. That. You are you are encouraged to sing along. I hope you know the lyrics, or you can hum along. Did somebody put up? Okay, we have. Oh, we even have the lyrics. So on this very positive note, very typical Filipino, let's end this with a sing along, right? <laughs> let's do karaoke. And that that applies to all the speakers, okay? You have the lyrics here. Take it away, Shirley. And remember, you have empanada and something to drink and an opportunity to speak. So thank you so much. I loved moderating and I hope you loved it as much as I did. Thank you. Maraming salamat. Shirley. So this song is meant to be sung by all of us, and it's the best moment, a very beautiful moment to, uh, to how to say, me meditate on the message of the song. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Together. Let he be so nursed and let it begin with me. Let he be so nursed and this that was meant to be. We 
so